You know, before even starting anything, the first question I had to myself was, is it still worth it to start a YouTube in 2018? And I'm gonna answer it in this video, so don't go anywhere. Cute! What's up everybody? Welcome back again. Uh, and this video is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna be more direct. I'm gonna kind of answer the question at hand. Is YouTube worth it to start it in 2018? We're gonna talk about what that means, things to think about, and my process so far in this journey. And I know I just started my channel personally, but I wanna go ahead and do this now while everything is still fresh in my mind as a new starter on YouTube in 2018, and I wanted to kind of give my true raw feelings out there while they were still fresh. So I'm gonna go down the list of five things that I believe that will help to answer this question. Number one, it's not easy, but it gets easier as you keep doing it. And in this topic, what I mean by that is, you actually get better at what you do. One of my mentors that I actually spend a lot of time with says this time and time again, you get good at what you do. And the amount of time that you spend doing something, you actually get good at it. Um, I'll never forget when he said it in his book, I believe it was the outliers. Those who spend 10,000 hours or more doing something, those are the ones that who become legends, right? Who become uh, the professionals. And like Michael Jordan spent over 10,000 hours playing basketball. But he said humans that spend a lot of time talking to other humans usually end up being really good public speakers. And that's why I follow people like Brian Tracy, the Zig Ziglar, um, and a few others that I failed to mention, obviously. There's a few out there that I really, really enjoy listening to. But it's because they practice on their craft. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure when they first got up on stage, they wanted to throw up, right? But over time, it gets easier because it's not easy starting out, but after a while, your brain starts to figure out a system on how to do things. And likewise, it's difficult when you're starting out in a place, I guess, where it, you know, it's a lot of competition and you have to stand out, right? And you believe that everybody who has the balls to make a video can actually speak when in actuality, what you bring to the table is very different and you need to actually hone in on that. You are very important in the process in being unique. When I first found out about YouTube, it was about 2007, right? And when I found it out, it, there weren't many videos out there. I mean, there was just enough, a lot of cat videos and very few people try to make it happen with very few crappy, I guess, camera quality. But now, in 2018, I mean, over the years, I mean, it's been, what, a little over a decade now, and people are coming out with some amazing content. I mean, sharp quality stuff. You really need to come out with guns blazing if you really want to make your presence known here on YouTube. And it does not mean that it's impossible. It just takes a little bit more work and more creativity for you to stand out uh, amongst the rest of the crowd because some of these people have been doing it for years. I mean, they've started like Gary Vaynerchuk. I hopefully will have the, the opportunity to meet him one day. Um, but Gary Vaynerchuk, when he started, I mean, camera quality was rough. It was probably one of the best I guess he had at that time. But when he started, it was kind of dark, dingy room, talking about wine. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Wine Library TV. I am Gary Vaynerchuk, Director of Operations here at Wine Library. But no matter what, he didn't stop and now he has Banner Media and he's explosive on social media now. It's story time. So one day, my friends better me to go find a four leaf clover in a field full of clovers. And I knew it was gonna be super hard because I said, you know what? How is it possible to find it when all of them that I've ever found have only been three leaf clovers? I almost didn't even believe they existed, but it did. So lo and behold, guess who won? Yours truly. And so I, I found it only because there was this one clover that stood the tallest amongst the rest. So I just picked it up first because obviously it stood out to me. And so the reason why I'm telling this story is because it's very important to understand that a field of clovers represents the YouTube content creators. And the people looking for the four leaf clover are the viewers. You are the four leaf clover. And the only thing is you have to stand out amongst the rest because you look like the rest. Do something different, be different, be you. Number two. Speak about your passions and not what's popular. See, when you find out what your passion truly is, 
and you build your content around that, it's easier to build content and to make content each and every day when you're making videos about things that you know, things that you have such an affinity for and you want to share with the world because then it oozes out naturally. Myself, I like to show people the difference between time freedom and financial freedom. Yes, they go hand in hand, but too often that I see people chase the money and financial freedom, but forget that the time is actually what you're really chasing. So that way you have time to spend your money so you can do what you wanna do. For example, if someone tells you at your job that you're not able to take vacation at a certain point of the year, you technically are not free. I'd hate to break it to you. So my goal is to tell people like, look, if someone tells you you can't do something, you're technically not free. It's, it's as simple as that. So my, my passion is that. You can see I'm already getting a little passionate about it in this video. I'm not gonna go on a rant. But that's what I mean, okay? Don't go for what's popular. Everyone is trying to do what's popular, but it doesn't come off as natural as if you speak to something that you know, like if it's playing soccer or if it's training, if it's you know uh, nutrition and how to diet correctly. Like if these are your niches, stick to those, build a following around that, and you'll find out how easy it is to make videos or content around that because not everybody knows what you know. You know something that somebody around you does not know and they need to hear it. And it's your job to get that message out there if you plan to. Number three is your big why. What is your why for starting and to keep going each and every day? Everyone needs a big why, and if you don't have one, that right there is a bad start to opening and starting a channel, okay? You should always have a reason to keep you going and keep you motivating as to asking yourself, why am I doing this again? Why am I out here? Why am I creating video? Why am I providing content? Why am I providing um, you know, information to the people that are watching my videos, okay? Because if you don't know what your big why is, you will always fall victim to uh, trying to find other sources to motivate you. And it's never as big as your true reason to why you actually started. Number four, when starting a YouTube channel, especially in 2018, I, I really feel that there is gonna be a lot of bumps. There are gonna be a lot of bumps in the road but that are designed to stop you from achieving your goal. When you're, you're starting a channel, you need to figure out where you're gonna find the music so that way you're not, you know, edging on copyright infringement. You need to find good graphics so that way you have a good banner so that people can be attracted to your channel or who's gonna do my thumbnails? I don't know anything about Photoshop or anything like that. Like these are things that are built to stop you along your way. And uh, not only that, aside from YouTube, the outside life, your support system is a big, 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 big factor. I'm telling you. So be aware that when you start something new and you go against the grain, especially like doing something that you're not normally used to doing, which is creating content and then posting it for public to see, you have to understand that your support system is really the one that's gonna keep you together. And how to, how to balance, say for those of us who are in a relationship and those of us who are married, keeping sane is the number one priority because very easily can this suck up a lot of time and you, maybe you don't have a lot of time and it may cause issues with um, time to create content and time to build your content and time to build your social platforms and, 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 and to um, kind of put yourself in a position where you can actually succeed. One of the best things to do is to just talk to your support system, whether it be your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever it is, and to explain to them, this is what I wanna do this year. This is what I need to do this year in order to feel fulfilled because that's what relationships and support systems are for. Once you explain to them what you're trying to do, if, some, if that person's truly supporting you, they should support you all the way through your journey, okay? So be aware that your support system can be your downfall, but if you explain to them and break it down and allow them to see how passionate you are about it, um, it's, a, it's a lot easier to actually go through this journey and you have somebody to talk to because they know what you're going through, okay? So my wife is very supportive. She's been with me from the beginning to the end. I had this channel set up in 2017, but didn't start because of the idea of thinking that YouTube was too saturated. So I'm here to prove myself and everybody else who probably thought the same wrong, and I'm going to move forward with it no matter what because everybody starts somewhere. Now number five. Number five is interesting because it's actually a byproduct from doing YouTube and being on social media, okay? One of the good things about being on social media and starting a YouTube in 2018 is that you get to meet so many different people. And I mean, different people reaching out to you from so many different platforms, it, you, you meet 
greet and help so many in one video. So I appreciate that because you don't have a stage to physically go on and to preach to the masses, right? So YouTube gives you the platform and a way to do that. So you can be at the comfort of your own home, you know, set up your videos how you like, have your own studio set up and do what you need to do and still get the message across to the masses that are wanting and needing your information. Now, remember what I said, YouTube is nothing without you. So let's get some takeaways. There are many YouTube creators out there, but none of them are you. Be you, be creative, be unique, be the long four leaf clover. Someone will find you and discover the content and the work that you're putting in eventually, trust me. And a quote that my brother had sent me was never stop forcing your dreams to become your reality. It's your turn to put your voice out there. And to answer the question, is it still worth it to start a YouTube in 2018? The answer, yes, as long as you follow these instructions. And remember, YouTube is nothing without you.